So, hi, my name is Magnea Björk Valdimarsdóttir um, or Magga, Magarena, <laughs> joke. Um, I am born in Iceland and um, sometimes I don't feel Icelandic. Um, so, I was wondering about why I say my nationality, why I name name my nationality because sometimes um, and for the most it doesn't matter where you're from I think <coughs> my background is in theater and theater teaching and then I ended up uh, going to university to study filmmaking in France and uh, one thing led to another yes so So uh, it was after the financial crisis, um, I was teaching uh, theater, uh, like I've done a lot, um, in a multicultural school in the city center. And I started taking walks with my, with a little camera I, I borrowed. And uh, <coughs> originally I was going to make a film about a man that died then. He was uh, an alcoholic. And I ended up uh, making a film about the street where he used to hang out and I found another main character that blessed every building every day very very admirable uh, man and uh, yes one thing led to another sometimes I was filming and holding my child <laughs> just like what just walk a little bit longer just just take a walk with mommy just a little bit further <laughs> mommy has to film and then uh, yeah and then uh, there was no turning back I don't know I I was self-taught I had many friends in filmmaking and uh, because I, I I'm an actress uh, uh, I gave favors I was acting and they were maybe helping me to edit or you know teaching me how to steal Final Cut Pro online and <laughs> you know very practical matters when you're starting out and you don't have any money and you you haven't studied filmmaking yet and you have this all this passion you know and need to uh, to create so this was how I began and uh, my first film went to a cute uh, documentary fe festival here in Iceland and uh, it's very nice how the industry, everybody helps each other out and, um, and it's a small world here in Iceland so uh, little by little I, I just continued and uh, made another f uh, documentary about the women in the uh, the supermarket uh, working the registers uh, one with uh, mental disabilities one from Poland an immigrant and and uh, the passion continued and then I decided to move to France and I found this film school at the same time I I went uh, I got pregnant with third child and uh, had a small boy and, and an older girl and I lost the child and decided to go to um, to Lesbos, to, uh, work, working with uh, refugees. My intention was to film there, which I did a bit, but there was another uh, person filming already and many people filming. And uh, of course, I wanted to show the world the situation um, because it was, uh, I felt it was, uh <coughs> Um, so much need that we we couldn't turn our backs that we couldn't we had to show the world what was happening it was sort of a holocaust and it's still going on of course and uh, but there I decided to to just work as a volunteer focus on that more but I came back to my studies and made a short film uh, from that and then just you know, snowball effect, you continue, you get ideas, you continue to work and you can't stop. <laughs> I think um, just maybe from, maybe from being 17, living in Spain, smoking joints, sitting on a bench and looking at reality like, whoa, this. 
this is amazing. <laughs> Just like, look, without, with silence, admiring uh, society, reality, what is behind and what is the reality behind the reality, etc. So, um, of course, also from theater, I, uh, I learn, I love to study uh, society. And um, maybe I've been also a politically active, an activist. And uh, when you get older, it declines, which is not good. But um, uh, I think then you can maybe use your voice in a deeper way to, uh, through your art, uh, to make a point. And um, I find my subjects uh, by uh, by curiosity, and sometimes they just um, my ideas um, are not uh, given to me, uh, and I make them uh, digest for a long time uh, before diving into them. So I, before even starting, I am digesting for a long time. And I have found my subjects for uh, maybe years before and just like developing how I would go in there. And then um, I think it's very, uh, how do you say, important to build trust in documentary filmmaking. So uh, like, like we should, uh, with every hum human being, uh, treat each other with respect. And uh, I think uh, this is a way to go in, just to be a good listener and uh, be curious and uh, treat everybody with respect and calmness and uh, find a way to, if you're even starting, uh, to be open to adventure because when I was filming my first film I was out in the street filming and there were people that came to me for example an old painter that studied in France and he just really offered me you know uh, his heart he was just it was called mobile phone <laughs> GSM and uh, his artist name was GSM and he just I went to his gallery, his work workspace and his home and he just opened up his heart. So he was a sort of a side character in my first film by coincidence. He just walked up to me, I was filming and he said, what is your name? And he just, he was just wonderful. So I think you should be open to if, uh, because you, in um, fiction you have uh, a script of course, you have a script in documentary filmmaking, but it can be uh, a little more adventurous if you're an, if you're open to um, improvising and open to adventure. So this suits my character very well because I'm very eager to learn new things and I'm very eager to uh, have adventures, <laughs> you know, experience new things. I have a skeleton. I I am I am I shouldn't I I am not embarrassed to say that but some people would say I should be embarrassed like no you have to have a manuscript I don't have to do anything that other people tell me to I just listen to my heart and I'm honest and go go in my direction because I know the end result is my baby and I know how it will uh, you know, I don't, maybe I don't know um, the eye color or, or, you know, the details, but I know s in a way how it will be because I made it from scratch. So I trust the, the voyage. I tr trust the, the, the way it should go. And uh, my way now is that the manuscript is born a lot in the editing room. And I love to edit. I love to create in the editing room. And this is also one of my favorite parts. I love to film, but I also love to edit. And uh, I think uh, a lot of magic happens in there. 
but I never say never because maybe next time I would uh, follow a manuscript totally and just be open, you know, because next time maybe it serves that project. So, for example, next project that I'm working on, it could in a way uh, give give the project uh, structure if I would, you know. So maybe I should do, yeah, maybe I should do that. <laughs> no, 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 but uh, I am very open to uh, the process. So I have a skeleton, as I say, I have, um, have um, scenes and uh, I have it all organized and uh, I see it through, but I'm open to adventure. Let's just say that. My new project is a film about uh, the yoga society worldwide and uh, burnout and why we feel the need to work as much as we do and what uh, unhappiness it's causing and maybe even uh, upon our children and further generations that we are, we are uh, giving out uh, wrong s signals because we are supposed to be uh, good um, role models and we are all stressed out and burnt out and you know an anxiety is a big reality and depression and many things and of course with uh, with covid it has many negative effects also on the mental uh, mental state of people so i would like to um, work on that for a few years. I have, I have also, I have already started uh, this research, and um, I have a yoga community worldwide that I want to research, and uh, their way uh, to to give people tools to handle reality as it is today because our reality is not the same as it was 20 years ago or it will be 20 years ahead. So just to uh, research uh, how, how we can find tools to feel better, how we can manage in this crazy world. I just think my character uh, and my uh, experiences, life experiences reflect probably my work. Um, uh, preferably I would prefer no borders and uh, I'm not saying that I, I prefer chaos, I prefer that um, we don't uh, dis discriminate <laughs> people and um, so, um, of course, I'm born in a cold island where everybody freezes up and doesn't say hi in the wintertime and then in the summertime we're all very open and wah, hi. So it's very, how do you say, um, it's maybe uh, like this northern feeling of a character. You, of course, you have to, you can't, you can't um, close your eyes on on your background or where you're from and, um, and there's so much um, strength I get from nature, for example, from being from Iceland. That's, that's my main religion, Mother Earth. So I would say that this is something I relate to as an Icelander, but um, in a way not at all. So it's a mixture of both. So. Um, maybe because I have been working as a theater teacher for 20 years and a tourist guide in the mountains of Iceland and you become a psychologist in a way <laughs> and uh, being a director also I have as an actress worked with so different di di directors in theater and film which have taught me many different things by experience and um, I think my way is uh, time giving a lot of time, giving people time. And uh, that causes me to film a lot <laughs> of hours, but um, that also gives um, 
gives people, um, how do you say, um, that just makes them relax, that we have time and we're going to film many times and this is just not a one-off, two-off interview. We're, it's a process and there's no rush, you know, we just, we just do it our way and also just communicating just by listening to their needs and, and finding, you know, not being de devious, but uh, maybe uh, in a way uh, open to their way in a way also. Just, it's just like a conversation. It's like also uh, um, if I would be directing professional actors, I would have a conversation with them. I would, I would uh, respect them as artists that have something created to say and give to the progress. So that's also maybe something that real characters also can do, that to give something into the prog progress. Hmm. Maybe thousands and thousands. But um, when I was a teenager, um, I was, um, what inspired the, me the most was um, after, you know, renting videotapes and watching Hollywood films uh, and uh, the, the possibility to go to cinema and see worldwide cinema, not only, you know, European and the Asian and, and for example, uh, Time of the Gypsies by Emir Kusturica was a great inspiration for me. Not, not only visually and the music, which is just went into my soul, but just like every detail that it, you can, it can be magic and you can be a little crazy and you don't have to follow rules. You can, you can just go all the way. And uh, this was what inspired me also into theater making to be like a bit crazy and, you know, not be conventional. And my favorite book has always been Cien Años de Solita, uh, 100 Years of Solitude. And um, yeah, just to, to name an author, Gabriel Garcia Marquez is so, something that there are so many characters and there are so many diversities and there's time and there is uh, society and there is history. So also this, um, curiosity about people and culture and and uh, feelings is something that was mind-blowing when I was a teen reading this book and I read it and have it in several uh, languages and just to something that follows me through I think the music and the Ahmo in time of the gypsies and and you know just something to, to name something but I, I don't I like I don't like to name things because mostly there are mostly uh, females that inspire me today. I'm working with a lot of directors and reading novels by great women, and it's just mind blowing what's happening today. Mm -hmm. Everything. <laughs> A little bit of everything. Human anthropology, for example. I would like to study that. Um, I would like to know more about uh, diverse societies and just being able to dive in and not be the white arrogant woman that comes to Africa with condoms. I think we have to go with the other way in. You know, we have to, we have to start respecting. Uh, we have to totally change our uh, way about things, how we represent um, the will to help, because there are so many marvelous major NGOs, small and big, that are doing so great work all around the world. And I think that... <laughs> so the, uh, the great NGOs... <laughs> So marvelous NGOs all around the world that are doing great things. And uh, those that are humble and um, listen, 
to the people that they are trying to help or will willing to help, that uh, is very important because that is not always the case. So I think that would be very cool. I don't, I don't know what I would say to myself because mm, because you don't want to interrupt things. You just want to let people do it their way. So when I'm teaching and when I'm talking to uh, my students or or somebody that asks for help, I just say, dive into it all the way. Find your phone, film, find find measures to to work because that's the only thing you have to do is to um, follow up on your ideas. Don't let them wait for 20, 30 years in a drawer. Go ahead, seek experience and Thankfully, um, technology is getting closer and uh, one good thing is that because of uh, societies like upper, upper class and lower class and everywhere in the world that at least you can, in a way, you know, you can at least, you can even steal a phone if you have the need, you know, just break law, do everything you can if you need. If you need to film, if you need to tell a story, do it. That's my <laughs> that's my advice. Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you.